Hello, welcome to Franklin County Home Health Agency's Where the Heart Is. I'm Jennifer DeSablo, your host for today's show. Through this monthly show, Franklin County Home Health Agency brings you information about the agency's programs and services, as well as helpful tips to help you and your loved ones stay safe and healthy at home. On today's program, we'll be talking about the importance of support given to the agency through voters on town meeting day, as well as through other activities, fundraising activities throughout the year. And I have with me two guests from the agency to talk about this. I welcome Janet McCarthy, the executive director at Franklin County Home Health Agency, and Bridget horrigan Rivet, who is the chair of our board of directors. And thank you both for being back here with me today. Most welcome. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. So we'll be talking about fundraising at Franklin County Home Health and why that's important. But let's start with a little background about each of you. Bridget, if you'd like to tell us about your um, experience with Franklin County Home Health Agency. Sure, I'd, I'd be delighted. Um, I was actually introduced to the agency in 2009 uh, when my dad became ill and, and ultimately passed away. Um, and that's when I met some of the care team that worked with my dad and my mom and all of us really and was very, very impressed with the team of folks, with the uh, support and the care that they provided to each of us. Um, and I knew at that point in time that I wanted to be engaged with Franklin County Home Health at some level and um, be an advocate for the organization. Wonderful. So you're a volunteer on our board of directors along mm -hmm. with how many folks are on the board? Well, I think there's a dozen of us. Yeah. Yeah, about 16. 12, we have 16. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have been able to help your family and I like a sentiment that we've heard oftentimes in our community is that folks often don't quite know everything that we do until they've been touched personally right. like you and your family have and um, thank you for giving back to the agency. Yeah. Thank you. And Janet, what is your experience at Franklin County Home Health? Well, I came to Franklin County Home Health have, have, after having worked 12 years in a hospital. I'm a registered nurse and I was always very curious about what happened to patients after they were discharged from the hospital. And during the course of my work in the hospital setting, I had the opportunity to work with many of the VNAs throughout Vermont. And I just thought, that's just a place where I think I want to be in my career. So lo and behold, an opportunity came up right in my own backyard um, 25 years ago. And I have been you know, feel very fortunate to have worked most of my professional career in a in this community where I live and doing work that I love. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, and congratulations on 25 years. Thank That's you quite very an accomplishment. Much. Yes, we're thank we're you. lucky to have you. Thank you. So, 25 years, I can imagine a lot of ch a lot has changed in healthcare in general, home care especially. Can you talk about the changes um, at Franklin County Home Health Agency that you've seen in the past well, 25 years? Well, certainly we have seen huge changes in uh, in our people. When I started in 1989, we had 56 employees, and now we have a staff of 200. Um, I think we only made about 10,000 visits that first year that I was at the agency and and that last year we made 80,000 visits so we've seen a lot of growth in our people as well as the visits we've seen a lot of growth in the kinds of services that we provide uh, we provide um, care to infants now all the way up to you know older older people we provide prenatal care all the way to hospice care so lots of growth in the kinds of services but I think one of the biggest things that we've seen a change in is just the use of technology so with me today I brought uh, one of the tablets that our field clinicians use to uh, provide uh, doc or document the care that they've provided. It's our electronic health record. Uh, Franklin County Home Health was an early adopter of a portable electronic health record. So it integrates with our billing system, our payroll system, and really provides on-time live information so that there's good coordination and communication. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been, that's been big, and actually when we first started, these were twice the size of this, so <laughs> even the technology itself has advanced and, and shrunk. How is that received by patients? Talk about that a little bit. Well, you know, I think in, in this day and age, um, people expect mm -hmm. the, Mm -hmm. to have their health care provider have an electronic record that's accurate, complete, and up to date. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but, you know, honestly, I just kind of without a ripple. Early on in 2007 when we started, it was curious. People were yeah. curious about it. But, but now really it's a, it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. The other piece of equipment that I brought with us today is our telemonitoring unit. And um, this telemonitoring unit allows us to help patients uh, avoid emergency department visits, uh, avoid uh, hospitalization, prevent hospitalization. Um, this piece of equipment allows patients to um, check their blood pressure, their pulse, the amount of oxygen they have in their blood, allows them to check their weight and answer some questions that might be pertinent to their health care. All that information gets transmitted through regular old phone line to a computer at 
um, at the office and a nurse monitors that information um, every day and is able to intervene if a patient is starting to have some problems or <coughs> the nurses might see a little bit of change and, and call the patient, maybe provide a little bit of education, maybe ask them to redo their numbers. Um, but it's been a very, very important part of our um, development in managing patients' um, care who have chronic, chronic illness. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of changes in technology, you know, a lot of changes in the kinds of dressing supplies that we use, you know. When I first started, yeah. all we used was gauze pads, mm -hmm. but now there's all kinds of sure. you know, different products that um, can help to successfully mm -hmm. care for patients in the home setting. Like you said, it's in a home setting, but we have high quality, state-of-the-art equipment and materials um, that are needed in their care. That's right. We had, we had a, a nursing student um, come work with us here a few weeks ago and she said your supply room looks just like the supply room at the hospital. <laughs> sure, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And and this also, uh, you know, we talk a lot about uh, home health, uh, patient care and self-educating and understanding your own health. So I imagine this kind of tool helps patients do that as well. Very, very important. You know, it's uh, that's part of what we try to do is to help patients be able to be involved mm -hmm. and, and really be managing their care. So uh, we can use this as a tool to help people and uh, you know, if somebody's weight is up, then we can say, let's talk about what you had to eat yesterday and tie that weight increase with that ham dinner that they enjoyed so well yesterday. So, uh, so a very important tool, very important part of the care that we provide to our community. Excellent. And like you said, we're making, how many visits did you say? We made 80,000, almost 80,000 visits last year. Some visits. Yeah. That's impressive. And then here's one that stuff can be happening when we're not in the home, but it's directly relayed to the office. So it's continuum of care. There. Right. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing, Janet. Okay. Um, and Bridget, uh, none of these improvements or being here as long as we have as an agency would be possible without funding from our individuals and our towns. Right. Um, so talk with us about town funding. I know the board's been really busy planning for a town meeting that's coming up right around the corner. Mm -hmm. um, what has the board been doing? What's the importance of town funding and what can folks expect on the ballots? The um, 80,000 visits, I mean, that's a pretty impressive <laughs> number. Um, last year, represented about 1,700 people that live in each and every uh, town mm -hmm. around the county. And last year we were very fortunate. Every town supported us financially. Um, and the total of that support was $50,000. Mm -hmm. uh, this year we were going out to each town again, uh, requesting their financial support. Uh, some towns we do it via a petition that puts it as a warrants and article uh, for the agenda on town meeting day. That happens to be how we do it in Fairfield and that's been a long-standing tradition. Uh, we look forward to having the support again this year from the voters of the town of Fairfield. Uh, the City Council in St. Albans opted this year to include that support as a line item in the budget. Um, so there's a lot of different alternatives that are used depending on the town and, and what their preferences are. But the $50,000 goes a long ways uh, towards supporting the care that's provided. Um, and we appreciate the support from folks. Yeah, that's a very impressive number from our towns. It and, is, and yes. Like you said, we appreciate that. Jana, why, why is that $50,000 necessary? What are, what are we doing with those funds? So that um, $50,000 really helps to support our people in our community who lack insurance or their insurance doesn't quite <coughs> cover the cost of the care that they need. It also allows us to um, provide support groups um, to our community. We have a grief and bereavement support group, the caring for a person with chronic illness. Um, and we just recently started another uh, support group called Baby Bumps uh, mm -hmm. for our mm -hmm. pregnant women who might be experiencing some difficulties during pregnancy. So mm -hmm. um, those kinds of um, discretionary funds really help to support those, mm -hmm. those activities to keep healthcare right at home in mm -hmm. Franklin County. And you mentioned the uninsured or the, um, those with not enough insurance to cover their services. What's that number like? What are we providing as an agency in, in that kind of care, charity so, care? So we provide about a half a million dollars in charitable care each year. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we like to think that as time goes on that that number gets reduced. But mm -hmm. we have a lot of people in our, ne in our community that have needs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so it's very valuable, very important um, to the work that we do. Excellent. And we don't say no to any need for care. That's, cr right, that's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. It's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. So, in addition to town support to help us fill that gap, what are the other community fundraising or uh, fundraising activities that we're doing in the community to support our work? 
Well, our signature fundraising <coughs> event is the Blue Jean Ball, and that's um, been held for six years now. It's always the last Saturday in October. Um, it sells out, mm -hmm. so if you're interested, get your ticket early. <laughs> <laughs> Check us on the website. Um, but that event, it, last year we grossed $50,000 on that event, which was very impressive. It was a, a stretch. And we have to thank not just the people that came um, and enjoyed the evening, but also the many sponsors that we had. Uh, there's a lot of businesses that support that particular event by either um, a financial <coughs> contribution or an item for the silent auction or an item for the live auction. There's a lot of different avenues and we enjoy and totally appreciate the support we get from a very broad range of businesses mm -hmm. around the county. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about this year's event? Uh, you mentioned that the theme changes from year to year. Are we relaying that information yet to the community? I think we can do a sneak preview. Oh, let's <laughs> go um, for the it. The timing is great. Yeah. It, this year our theme is Mardi Gras, yeah. which we're actually um, going to introduce at our board meeting next week. Mm -hmm. And our board meeting just happens to be on Fat Tuesday. <laughs> so we've got a little surprise oh, planned fun. for the board on that one. But mm -hmm. Mardi Gras will be, mm -hmm. will be fun. That Very will be good. fun. So dress up in your blue jeans. Come and support the agency. Your green, gold, purple. Mm -hmm. You know, pull the colors out from Mardi Gras and, and uh, enjoy it. Yeah. And what a nice time of year to have a party. And <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> great. In October. It's great. Sure. Very nice. Um, Janet, anything you'd like to share about the blue jean ball? Um, no, I think um, it's just... Stay tuned for more. We'll, you know, it's it really is a. It, as Bridget said, it's a signature event. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun to plan. Uh, yeah. We get a lot of involvement from our board, mm -hmm. uh, from our staff, and from our community. And you know, if people want to come. Mm -hmm. They, yeah. they want to come back. I so. mean, it typically sells out, yep. which is a, a really another nice message of support. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know that it sells out. Yeah, and we we know that people have choices, mm -hmm. and you know there are a lot of wonderful uh, organizations that our community supports, and we truly appreciate the support that we receive for the mm -hmm. work that we do. Absolutely. So the ball is a fun activity to help raise money and awareness. Uh, what else happens throughout the year that in ways that people can give to the agency and support? Well we have an annual campaign I believe we kick off typically in April. Um, we also have a lot of bequests um, that are sent our way in memory of a loved one or in honor of a loved one mm -hmm. as well as you know contributions uh, throughout the year. Um, and again, that's an important part of our activities as well. I mean, an example recently, we had a bequest and the uh, person specifically wanted it to be used for staff development and education. So we were able to purchase some new technology that will help us in you know, doing online meetings and st training events and that type of thing. So it was, uh, it was much appreciated. Nice gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was great. We saw it the other day and I was like, oh, this is cool. It's a yeah. great big screen TV <laughs> that you can really leverage for educational um, opportunities. Wonderful. So. And those memorial donations, as you said, folks, if they had questions about them, can call our promotions and development specialists and ask how they can give or just call the front desk group. Right, or look online. And look online. Yep. Sure. Yeah. And can, you, can we talk about some of the, well, other fundraising activities? Um, talk about the United Way and how that supports the agency? Yeah, well, the Franklin Grand Isle United Way has been important throughout our history uh, in the community. Uh, for the last two years, they have been supporting uh, two programs that we um, provide. One is our homemaker program um, that primarily serves older um, adults and younger people with disabilities who might need just a little bit of help getting groceries, meal preparation, all those kinds of things that helps to keep people safe and independent in their home setting. Uh, the second program is to help us develop and implement our pediatric palliative care program. So our pediatric palliative care program serves um, people under the age of 18 who face a life-limiting disease and uh, through that uh, support of the United Way, we've been able to um, train our staff in how to care for that population. Uh, we've been able to contract with uh, art therapists and music therapists to provide families with more support during a very, very difficult time in their lives. So uh, we're very appreciative of the, of the work that the United Way does. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And you, you've, you're mentioning as you were talking the types of people who are who benefit from this, but give us another example of the people we're serving and when you make a gift to home health, uh, who's directly benefiting from that? So when you make a gift to home health, you help to take care of the person who's on our hospice program who is facing their end of life. You're helping to take care of the young pregnant woman who 
uh, down on her luck and needs some financial resources or some you know ways to to make sure that she has a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby um, you know somebody that's just lost their job and doesn't have insurance it could be someone that's got a newly diagnosis of new diagnosis of cancer and um, is receiving some chemotherapy and radiation or treatment for that cancer and needs our services mm -hmm. uh, in, in between times so or, you're, and the, I mean another example that comes to mind if I think of you know family and friends you know someone transitioning from hospital to rehab and then home may need some care mm -hmm. during those right. initial days or weeks at, right. at home yeah. uh, to get them to 100% and independent mm -hmm. and at home, yeah. which is really very, very important. Absolutely. So so a, a gift to home health is makes so much of a difference for any population you may have an uh, interest in and uh, um, a need to help. So it mm -hmm. sounds like from, from infants to someone at the end of their life, you're really making a big difference. And for the community in general, for our, the, wealth, the health and well-being of the whole community with our, like you said, the other support groups and uh, supplemental activities. It's a Great work, thank you. Um, add to that, Janet, you've been talking a little bit about, um, we just mentioned end of life care and transitioning and stuff. Start the Conversation is a program um, that we've done for a little while now. Can you talk a little bit about that and what's new and what's happening with Start the Conversation? Sure, so Start the Conversation is actually an initiative that was um, developed with our partner nonprofit home health agencies throughout Vermont a couple years ago. Um, and it was a way to really help um, our families and parents and children of aging parents or our, even our own staff mm -hmm. uh, how to have those difficult conversations. What do you want at the end of your life? You know, Do you want to be resuscitated? Do you not want to be resuscitated? What kind of burial or funeral arrangements do you want? So um, it's, um, it's a great program. Um, do we have tea bags for you know really encouraging that con those conversations to happen and we're very very excited because uh, we are working with our community partners the hospital the mental health the nursing homes really looking um, to develop and engage our whole community in the conversation um, so we've got a training program coming up um, in April to train other people train the trainers uh, to be able to facilitate groups to learn how to have the conversations and really spread the word throughout our community that, mm -hmm. you know, having, make those decisions um, in an informed way mm -hmm. and get all that work done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is that good. training geared toward, Janet, folks, anybody interested or is there a special target? For training? Oh, I think uh, we are looking <laughs> for individuals who are willing to um, present to groups and facilitate mm -hmm. groups uh, to you know really help to spread spread the word um, mm -hmm. so if anybody's interested they can call our number and um, mm -hmm. ask to, sp to speak with Mary mm -hmm. um, and uh, they provide more information yeah and you can see our information online we'll give our number and information at the end of the show um, let's get back to, to town meeting day, if you would, for a second. Speaking of sharing information, how can folks find out what Franklin County Home Health does in their own town? What are they doing in Fairfield? What are they doing in your town? Um, and how can they find out some information about what to expect on town meeting day there in their town? And if they're going to be away, some people might be taking vacations, what should they do? Well, if, they, if you're going to be away and it's an Australian ballot item, you can you know, get your absentee ballot and vote ahead of time. If it's, you know, warned as an article and handled during the town meeting, then do your best to be there. Mm -hmm. um, we do have information in terms of broken down by each town, how many people we saw, how many visits, that type of thing. So all of that information is available. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, stand up and support us. And, and if there's questions, we're here to respond. Mm -hmm. we, um, we have representation at each of the town meetings, so mm -hmm. all of those individuals have, um, you know, the numbers of visits and all that um, statistical information about what we did. We also have it posted on our website as well, so mm -hmm. that's another good way. And we're always happy to answer questions if folks want to call. Wonderful. So we look forward to that support on Town Meeting Day and, and throughout the year and all the ways you have shared with us today about how people can give to the work that you're doing and, and I appreciate that. Is there anything else you'd like to add as we get ready to close today? 
No, I just would like to uh, once again thank our community. You know, we are the home health agency in Franklin County, and um, you know, we I like to say we were born and bred here. Um, <laughs> you know, we have a long history of serving the people in the community. Most of our staff live in this community and are very committed to making sure that their friends love friend, loved ones, and neighbors have excellent high quality home care. And I think that sets us, you know, it sets a very high standard and a, a really strong desire to do the right thing and do the best, provide the best care. So um, we do that through the support of our community and it's just a great time to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I, people have heard me say this before, but the way I characterize my first interaction with home health, not my last, but my first, was being introduced to some angels on earth. Mm -hmm. And if folks are out there that haven't experienced and interacted with Franklin County Home Health, um, that's what you can look forward to. For those of us that have, I think there's probably uh, quite a few other people that would agree with me. Yeah. So. Very nice, thank you for sharing. Thank you both for being here and sharing so much and for the work that you do here well, in thank our community. You, thank you. And thank you for watching. If you have any questions about our topic today, about how you can support Franklin County Home Health Agency, or about our agency's programs and services, if you or a loved one need help uh, learning more about home health care, hospice, or planning end of life care, please call our agency at 527 7531. You can also find information online at www.fchha.org. And as we mentioned, we have information posted there that will help you at town meeting or learn more about our agency. Uh, also, you can connect with us on Facebook and we look forward to engaging with you there. Thank you again for watching and be well.